good morning and a happy sunny Saturday. I am sorry it's been a while since I went live. Hey Evanita. Yeah, I decided I didn't want to face the camera this morning. So I was like, uh, random pictures of yarn feels fine. Hey Elena, nice to see you. It's been a while since I went live. Um, it's... Uh, and another reason why I'm not going on camera right now is it's uh, just, you know, the mental state of everything with that's happening in India and I just never was feeling in the mood of going online and being chatty. Um, <clears throat> so, but I have been spinning just been avoiding going online much with my life views. So maybe I might cut this short as well. I'll just see how I feel. for another pair of socks um, and this is going to be my third pair of handspun socks the first one which I had done on Sheila Sheila also known as my aura wheel um, they came out really cool and that's what resulted in uh, you know the fine knit uh, mud patterns right with the color stripes in them it's all inspired from those socks uh, those socks were wearing well and if you all remember uh, maybe the picture of that might pop up around here eventually uh, one of them um, was a traditional three ply and the other was a chain ply and before I had ever spun for socks um, there was this notion which I had heard and I was also pretty much convinced that uh, chain ply is not a good yarn for socks um, however it's you know you have to experiment to find out I even read about it in Sarah Anderson's book in which she kind of felt the chain ply pretty much performed like the traditional ply so it wasn't that it was inferior it's just that you know you hear from the first people who have talked about it and it influences how you think so it was basically the idea that it's kind of just a crochet chain it will have those bumps they're gonna feel rough in your feet they're gonna wear out faster these are all the you know presumptions made before you actually do anything uh, in my case, I was like, I'm, I'm just going to spin and see, experiment and see what happens. Yes, and it's all about the twist. And uh, from my uh, pair of socks, my traditional three ply actually wore out a lot faster than my Navajo ply and my Navajo ply still is not showing any thinning out or anything and uh, like Evanita pointed out uh, it's all about twist it uh, does seem like my uh, Navajo ply had more twist in its ply rather than my traditional three ply so it's not got to do with the fact that it is you know uh, it has crochet chain like or anything you cannot feel those bumps which many people keep talking about I really I did many blind tests to see if I could tell the difference and I couldn't tell which sock I was wearing on which foot foot 
right now I can because the traditional three ply has thinned down significantly on the heel that I can feel the cold floor underneath so I think a Navajo chain ply or chain ply is actually not a bad option at all for um, making a sock yarn you can get some really cool stripes and do it that way uh, the other reason also why that yarn probably didn't uh, stand the test of time is that um, it was a superwash merino and nylon blend yeah so julie mentioned that her chain plies always have more twist and i think part of the reason why is because there is so much hand movement involved in doing your chain and then put uh, feeding it onto the wheel it does get more time to build that twist up compared to a traditional three ply where you're just feeding the yarn you know the three plies in and not doing anything else with your hand so that i think can uh, cause a little bit uh, of extra twist which in this particular case it actually helps your uh, sock yarn so uh, so like I was saying the other reason could also be that uh, my first uh, pair of socks that was superwash merino and nylon blend uh, but it also had some only superwash merino it was like this mixed bundles of fiber thing but it was all either superwash merino or superwash merino nylon blend in it so that is also the reason why it you know did wear out faster but it was the same one in the Navajo ply which didn't yes uh, so Evanita also pointed out that you know the bump area that comes in a chain ply is uh, very dependent on the fiber you use if like the merino nylon I was using you could hardly even notice where the bump was or forget feeling it you couldn't even visibly see it it's like it was hard to see it in the yarn um, now I did another experiment which uh, I can maybe share it's 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 uh, going to be released soon which has a different fiber blend I finished another pair of socks um these are actually matching pair of socks which again i hand spun uh and i did a chain ply on this so yes long wool fibers like sorry don't uh, blend well mohair on the other case also will be one of those uh chain plies where you do feel the bump um, I can tell you that this one did have more hair in it uh, and yes there were those areas where um, you know the the loopy bump was very obvious in the finished yarn even after washing um, like I I knew it would happen it's it what it didn't come as a surprise but the thing is, I did want to create that self-striping look in the yarn and chain ply was like the best option I felt for it. So, and I wanted to, you know, test out like, yes, they say it's bad, but once a fabric is knitted, does it really matter? So, uh, even though it might be an obvious loop and while knitting too, you can actually, I can see that loop come across when I was knitting those socks. And... Um, and I don't know if you can, you can't tell it in the finished fabric though, but sometimes on the needles, it used to be so obvious that it almost made me think that is it two stitches or, you know, it's that chain, it's the loop of the chain ply. So it means it is that much of a difference. So is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't know. But mohair is a pretty strong fiber. So even though it might have those loops and even though it's chain plied, does it really make a difference in the fabric of the sock? Will the sock still wear better regardless of that fact? 
uh, well I, st I, st I cannot feel those loops uh, when I wear those socks so that is not an issue really uh, so that so that would be another level of experiment to check with that that even if you do see those loops they are so much obvious do they wear out faster if it is a strong fiber like mohair so that's another level of test in that um, what I'm experimenting with right now this is also a, another sock spin uh, this is a cheviot and the fiber is dyed by uh, Edgewood Garden Fiber Studio uh, she does lovely colors and I instead of doing a chain ply now because I know well chain ply I add extra twists it does last longer all good and I have proven that but um, if I do a traditional three ply but I very consciously add more twist to it in theory it should behave just like my over plied chain ply right so it should last this time around I know it's not an apples to apples com uh, comparison because this is a different fiber this is Cheviot, my first socks were Merino, so, uh, but it will at least give another perspective that, okay, if you want to do traditional three ply and not do a chain ply, then, um, then maybe add extra twist in your, uh, chain ply I am uh, spinning this with an extra twist in my single as well um, I do keep my cheat sheet card next to me to make sure I'm spinning at the same uh, wraps per inch uh, this is my plyback test out here which I can compare this against and see if I'm making the same kind of yarn which it is pretty close so that's another way you can check and that is a three ply ply back I did uh, just to see if I like the thickness of the sock yarn this doesn't have that extra twist in it right now but when I actually do chain ply it then I mean when I actually do three ply it I will add that extra twist to it and I do like I do like my tiny knob on Sheila to just hold the thing if I can actually hang it on it there we go so so that's essentially been my process uh, trying to create consistent sock yarn um, and also at the same time experimenting with you know different uh, constructions um, I know the one uh, the one the one uh, yarn construction which also has been favored by many and this is after reading the article from ply magazine is uh, a four ply cable um, the thing with that I was considering doing that and maybe I'll do that for the next sock spin I do is uh, you have to spin first of all a lot of now you need you know four separate singles plus at the same time you need to be spinning them pretty fine and um, previously in fact, I've done the uh, cable ply uh, yarn construction uh, I've, I'd, I've done it a lot in art yarns but I've also done it in some traditional yarns just to see how the colors play 
the colors do give a pretty interesting speckled look and they do look neat if you use different colors they also can have that tendency of muddying up but you know it can be a look that you want so it should be fine but the other interesting thing about that um, that is that you have to spin even finer if you want to get enough yardage for your uh, chain ply I mean for your cable ply so maybe I can spin finer I just haven't tried it yet and then the other thing which is actually a more important thing that I had noticed uh, from my previous uh, cable plied yarns was they can kind of tend to feel a little ropey uh, maybe I'm adding more twist at a certain stage that I shouldn't so it does require some testing on my part as well to make sure that the yarn I'm getting is you know if it is going to be like rope of course it's going to stand the test of time but then it's not going to be a comfortable yarn for socks so I kind of need to find that perfect balance and uh, I had read somewhere that in order to avoid making that a ropey kind of uh, cable yarn what one should do is um, so you usually add more twist to M to what? twist to ply you mean? Yeah, so what I was thinking is that um, I had read somewhere that this, in the single you should avoid adding too much twist when you're doing a cable ply. Then when you do your uh, two ply, then you add the extra twist so much that it does ply back, back on itself to make your cable yarn. And then you ply those together and make your cable yarn. Yeah, so if you're doing uh, singles for a chain ply, yeah, it makes sense to add more twist to singles and then more twist in the ply. So in the cable yarn, that's what it is. If I do add more twist to the singles and, you know, then do the two ply, which also has the extra twist and then ply that up with again extra twist, it lands up becoming more ropey. Of course, it's going to last longer, but I also want them to be comfortable so I think I'd read somewhere, and maybe it was in uh, Sarah Anderson's book itself, where she said you want to add very little twist in your singles in that case. Chain ply is the same as Navajo ply. Yes, Andrea. In which we are basically making a crochet chain, hence the name chain ply. So... The chain ply just has resulted in an extra twisted yarn which has worked well for my previous sock. And uh, rather than just doing that, I, what I'm trying here now is doing a traditional three ply. And the way I'm playing with color in this case is I am uh, spinning it as a fractal spun yarn. So it will still have some kind of stripiness to it but more subtle and but i'm going to be more uh, aware of how i apply it i might just do a, a traditional you know a traditional three ply and then i might just send it through the wheel again to add that extra twist sometimes it's easier to do that than to pay a lot of focused attention on you know while you're applying that whether are you adding enough are you adding enough because you need to be aware of it throughout the ply it's sometimes uh, much easier to just ply it like how you normally would and then just send it through the wheel again uh, as you normally would adding that extra twist so you can kind of do both in a very uh, you know uh, a very relaxed way rather than being completely you know 
paranoid about the fact are you adding too much or is it way too much every step of the way so I know it's extra work but you know I think it would work So that's that's my plan for the sock spin. And I know I have completely stepped away from my art yarns and uh, I, I still have plans to do many of those. Uh, just taking a break, I didn't want to, you know, complicate my brain too much with very complex methods of spinning though even when I'm spinning fine sock yarn you can see I can clearly complicate things uh, that's never been a problem for me to complicate I sometimes I'll end up folding up the fiber if I'm not careful this is a very grabby fiber so um, you know it does different things it really grabs onto itself like very easily. I have some of you here I just kind of wanted to think out loud on a particular spin I have in mind um, I could sit here and share pictures and make it a whole thing but uh, let's just let's just talk about it if you don't mind or let why don't you just hear my mind out so the thing is I kind of want to do a sweater spin um, and I, I have done uh, a sweater spin in the past where I had planned out how I wanted my sweater to look like so I dyed it in a particular way and you know it uh, made it into a gradient spun the singles all of that knit up the sweater everything was great um, now for this next sweater spin I I kind of have a pattern in mind which is basically like a sideways knit sweater from sleeve to sleeve so essentially your sweater uh, it's actually a hoodie so it will end up having vertical stripes uh, vertical stripes throughout the sweater and um, rather than you know planning it out as to which colors to use and everything and you know dyeing the fiber for it and spinning it that way I kind of wanted to have that random uh, mixed look of colors all over um, because you know it will be cool to have vertical stripes of different colors in it. Uh, and my plan was to take all these different braids uh, not necessarily belonging to a particular color family or anything but you know just a, just a real mix of yarns and uh, stripping them into tiny little bits maybe an ounce or half ounce each and uh, just plying them uh, spinning them one after the other random order and making a three ply yarn out of it because i do like knitting with a three ply uh, now i know what you're thinking and which is probably what is going to happen is you know the dreadful oh you're gonna muddy up the colors no not combo spinning but just 
spinning them one after the other. I think combo spinning, at least what I refer combo spinning as holding two colorways together and spinning them together. I'm not talking about that. I'm spinning just spinning each of these tiny little colorways one after the other. Uh, very much like how I'd done my sock spin, actually. Uh, my first sock spin, which was just random different colorways spun one after the other. Um, and if uh, you remember Ebonita uh, or others too that I had done um, that similar kind of random spin. Oh, that's what you call combo spin? Then what do you call the spin in which you're holding the two colorways together and drafting them together to spin? That's what I refer to as combo spin. At least that's that's the term which I picked up from uh, Jillian uh, because I think she refers to it as combo spinning when you're holding two colorways together and spinning. Which makes, which, uh, which actually mixes the colorways even further. This, this should be a, a name that differentiates the two, right? It's, it can be called anything because they both are combining different colorways to spin. But at least that's what I've been referring the names as. But uh, so, so of course the fear is that... So the plan is to basically spin one colorway after the other small little bits of colorways that way and uh, when you do a three ply you will land up mixing them all up now if uh, now i had done this last year good morning suzanne we are talking about a crazy random colorway sweater yarn which I'm planning so uh, at least which I'm thinking of so oh it's combo spin versus combo draft okay so I'm talking about combo spin then in which different colorways small bits of them just spun one after the other and then you ply them into a three ply now I had done that whole thing last year during the pandemic with almost like I think it was more than a pound of uh, fiber from Into the World, which I had uh, actually won as part of um, Jillian's uh, blog entry thing. Uh, so I did that, but I'd done just a two ply. And the other thing was, it still looked like a very cohesive yarn at the end because it was all from the same dye. So, you know, it's like, it, it makes a very cool color way at the end. The yarn looks amazing. Um, I wish I had done a three ply of that because then I would be able to, I like knitting with a three ply. I don't really care knitting uh, stock and stitch with a two ply. So my plan this time around is to make a three ply on same kind of method, you know, small bits of different colorways, but these would be different colorways that I just have in my stash. So it's not from the same dyer, it's different dyers, it's all over the color wheel. And uh, just uh, doing a traditional three ply out of it. Now, it's pretty obvious and you know that it would muddy up everything. Oh, you're, yeah, I saw your post that your lace fly does not work. Um, yeah, this is how it should work. There is almost the same amount of room that there is when you have your traditional uh, bobbin on. So I don't know if your bobbin is the wrong size or the flyer head is wrong size. I have no idea why you're experiencing it. The head is, a, the, the, head is the same as the traditional. So it's just not the overdrive head is different and this is the one that comes with the wheel which i use with the jumbo flyers and 
I just put on the lace flyer with the lace bobbin. The lace bobbin is smaller. So are you using the lace bobbin? We're jumping from our subject of my sweater spin, but that's okay. We need to make sure. You're using the lace bobbin and still there's no movement. And I'm very curious to know why that's happening. Hopefully Glynis or Susie can help you out with that. I have no idea, but... Maybe, uh, maybe post uh, pictures on that uh, thread that you have started. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, no, that's fine. We we have no particular topic of discussion anyway. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking at combo spinning and then uh, is there a part two to this i want to see what the resulting yarn looks like this still you know these three four braids still kind of look like they will go together i am kind of doing this with stuff which is like and she is looks like arranging them in a particular order to get some kind of balanced yarn out of it I plan to really randomize it are you sending me to the passionate yes I have seen the passionate nets uh, spinners link on that too and I have liked that uh, thing but again I think she also chooses uh, one particular um, yeah, that's the first one I'd seen years back as well. Uh, but I think, again, she chose, like, one particular colorway. Like, they all kind of belong to one colorway. Uh, I'm, I'm not doing it totally random either. I'm thinking if 70% of it kind of belongs to one colorway and maybe 30% of it is kind of all over the place, it should still work. But I'm, I'm really not sure. It just feels like, you know, stripping out a whole lot of fiber and, um, you know, committing it to such a big project. And then at the end going like, oh, I don't think this yarn is nice. <laughs> so it's making me a little nervous for the color choices I have uh, put in. Uh, let me, since you're all here, maybe I can uh, post on a comment in this live chat uh, with a picture of the fibers I'm talking about. So you can, okay, I can, I can do that. I don't need to listen to myself, but how do I attach a picture to this? I can't attach an image to my live feed. Isn't that weird? Let me see if I can do it on my computer real quick. If I can, then... No, I cannot. It doesn't let me comment with a picture. That's weird. Very weird. Um, anyway, well, I, I I know one way I can show you. Maybe it might work. Let's see. Maybe I can show it to you on my phone. 
how about that so so these are the different colorways i'm talking about so it's like a bunch of blue purples so there is a lot of blue purple going on and there are different colorways of this um let's see if it focuses better let's try this uh, okay yeah the colors are not showing up true uh, they are a lot more saturated than that but but I, I don't know if you can see where I'm going with this. Right. Now, I can be on the safe side and go like, let me just pick mostly all the blue purples and just add very little of the other colors. But then I think it'll be a very boring spin as well. So I'm kind of going like, maybe that won't be that satisfying so i really don't know and this is the kind of pattern i'm thinking of so it's a hoodie with vertical stripes so i i don't want it like such stark stripes in it but you know how hand spun just uh just makes stripes i kind of want that randomized stripe look with all the fibers and see this is like another picture of all the yarns together and I really cannot tell if it's gonna work or not so if there are any suggestions like even if it does become a, a muddy color as such right it will be an interest, interesting muddy color because it has all these different colors mixing it in to make it a muddy color. Um, I'm also thinking it will be one way for me to have something that's neutral colored because if you know me, I, there's very last chance that I'm gonna spin just plain brown colored fiber. So I could spin all these different colors together and apply them together and still have an interesting yarn, knit it up and still have that interest going on in the yarn, but at the end result up, result with a muddyish colored, you know, sweater, like a neutral colored sweater with pops of color just appearing here and there if they want to. And uh, just to show you something else, I did do a small uh, knit sample. Just to show you what I mean by the muddiness, right? So it it did things like this when I just I just took little bits and bobs of that fiber pile. Uh, this is knit a little bit tighter than I would like the fabric to be. But um, this is a three ply out of random colors like that. So, and I'm thinking vertical stripes. So these would be running vertical along the sweater. Is it that bad an idea? Uh, or would it actually make an interesting fabric color wise, you know? Let me know what you think. And I, I particularly don't want it to be an over planned project either because I really, I want to do this as my morning relax spin that I do every morning with my coffee. Um, and uh, it's a spin I would uh, likely do on my Landrum wheel, which uh, sits in the living room if the weather is nice, I can take it outside uh, in the backyard and spin on it. Uh, the aura wheel stays in the study, so in my fiber studio. 
I don't like carrying it around everywhere. So yeah, it is boring without colors and just having all those random colors uh, will make it a fun spin. I know the spinning will be fun. I know the plying will be fun. I know the netting will be fun. I might, there might be sections in that or a lot of it might be like, turning very neutral very gray very brown but then there'll also be bits random bits of color pops coming in because you know uh, it's just the way the colors I've chosen so I think it'll make an interesting fabric color wise but usually I'm fine and, and I'm still kind of fine with just experimenting to see how it goes I'm not too shy about it but it is a big commitment as well it is taking several of my fiber braids which are perfectly nice and fine and stripping them all down for this one particular big project which makes it a little nerve-wracking as to what if this is not a good idea and I don't like the resulting thing now the other thing I had thought was that I could just um, like maybe pick a few of those braids which I think will go together and the ones that I'm you know it, that won't be clearly the total amount of fiber I need for this spin but maybe then I can um, dye some more or purchase some braids that would go with it to make up for all of it and then it would be a little bit more planned but then that's what happens it becomes more planned then it kind of becomes like you know you're kind of in the same color family and then it's that same boring spin with you know just the same like if it's all blue and purple it's just kind of going to be all blue and purple with maybe a color pop here and there and maybe then that's not fun anymore and then it's like you've gone through all and then once there's all that time and effort that has gone into over planning it it kind of removes that joy of surprise when you're actually doing it because now you have already thought of it you have already planned you already kind of know what's going to happen because you're taking the safe approach of these colors and just do it this way and just you know spin so that that's what is kind of like the thing that I really just want to do the random scrappy look of it but I think regardless because there are so many colors added to it I think it'll still be cohesive in a certain weird way like it might not read as blue purple or any particular color as such but because the entire sweater will be kind of in those colors it might still be okay any other thoughts interesting for sure <laughs> the interest part is there and um, few things uh, which uh, actually was I was rereading one of the older issues of fibery goodness and I wasn't kidding when you know I've been posting about encouraging people to subscribe to the magazine is because of the fact that I do go back and reread things because I find a lot of interesting things which might not have been of interest to me at that time but later are and I came across the article where it was talking about I think it is probably one of the earlier issues uh, maybe Evanita can point out which one it is. Maybe even I can look it up if it's open already on my computer here. Um, it was talking about uh, spinning for consistency by taking braids of different fiber and making tiny little bundles of it and spinning them all so that they are all consistent because I would not need the yarn to be consistent to quite an extent eventually right so um, yeah I, I can't is it no it's not the 
text issue as it issue two I have a feeling it's issue two I know it's one of the earlier ones so I was I'm just scrolling through that issue Yes, it is issue two. It is uh, Be the Boss of Your Spinning by Robin West. Um, that's the issue I'm talking about in which you're basically taking a bunch of these different bundles of fiber and then you're just spinning them. They all have different staple lengths. But at the end, you're landing up with this very consistent yarn. So... Uh, that's what kind of gave me this idea that hey, I would like a yarn like that and I think it'll look really cool in a sweater with and I don't care if it's stripes I don't like horizontal stripes on a sweater uh, for myself so if I'm doing a sideways knit sweater I would get vertical stripes and hand spun seems to be a good option and this way I would get like a bunch of colors thrown in uh, some of them might get muddied, some of them might stand out, and I think it might still be fine. So, so for the, the people who are watching and haven't subscribed yet to the magazine, go ahead and subscribe. There are many such articles in it, which are, which, you know, send you in different directions. It's not just, uh, that article was written about trying to spin a consistent yarn even with different fiber blends and different fiber content and all of that so you're kind of spinning it all to one bobbin trying to make the same thickness single but um, you could apply that whole thing to do this kind of big project you know and I'm also thinking in a way that if I do spin it and ply this particular yarn and I feel it's kind of a bit too wild for the sweater or something. I think there's a good amount, a decent amount in it with which it could be maybe knit into a blanket, um, adding some commercial yarn to tie it all in together. So there are some other possibilities to, you know, it's not like it will be a completely wasted yarn. I think there is some... some value in a yarn like that and uh, if nothing at all there's definitely uh, that morning peaceful time that I get for spinning which I will still get by spinning these different bits and bobs of yarn on it that's what's more important that's the kind of project I'm looking for so that I don't have to think every time, what should I spin on? I'm already done with this and I'm already done with that. This would be, like, I think it scratches that itch which I have for my early morning spinning. Lots of color, randomness thrown in, but still being very focused and conscious of what I'm doing. Um, I could totally just pick one particular braid of color and just spin that and I've done that and it's good but then that's what when it becomes very um, I'm just spinning the same color then I can then I'm not mindful of the spinning I'm kind of lost in this you know my thoughts again rather than being focused on the spinning so I think having the different colors and the different fibers in the different braids and trying to make a consistent yarn out of it and being the early morning quiet uh, mindful meditative exercise to spin that way is, uh, is probably a good project 
to work on. Anyway, those are my thoughts. While I'm spinning on these socks. So, with uh, I just have a little bit of fiber left in my hand. And Evanita, am I making you proud of my very nice evenly, almost evenly uh, wound up bobbin? So Evanita has an amazing article on that as well uh, in the magazine on how to actually load up your bobbin to make very even, how to be the human woolly winder basically. So subscribe to that magazine. Yes, I am using the lace bobbin and wool, Kimberly. Since this is a sock spin, uh, it makes it a lot more easier to spin fine. And I'm using the lace bobbin with uh, the big fat core in the center. I recently learned that there is actually another kind of bobbin which has called the baby bobbin, which has a thinner core which goes with the lace flyer. But uh, this is the one which has the thick core in it. And uh, actually now that I have finished spinning that, I'm almost halfway uh, done with my second ply. That means and that means I'm almost halfway done with the spin. And uh, it doesn't look like there's enough room, but I know previously I've managed to fill in four ounces on this uh, on this bobbin, even though it has a thick core on it, and uh, which has been enough for you know spinning for socks so that's what my plan is hopefully i can just fill it on on this and um, my plan next since i am doing a fractal spin uh, i will be dividing all that fiber it's already you know i've already split it up into the way i want it for the fractal and that's the order in which i'm spinning it one after the other uh, i'm then just going to divide the bobbin or uh, all the fiber in the bobbin uh, onto separate bobbins later on, wind them separately, and then ply from there, uh, rather than actually spinning these on three separate ones. One reason is because I don't have three bobbins. Uh, I have two, but uh, even though I still like to, you know, put them on storage bobbins, let them rest, and then ply it anyway. And uh, when I do put them on storage bobbins, that gives me another check on them to see if there are any weak spots in the yarn. Helps me redistribute the twist in the single. Uh, I keep it at a really far distance and uh, put my singles on storage bobbins. So that also kind of helps, you know, uh, even out my singles and then I apply the whole thing. So that's my process and uh, hopefully it gives you some ideas on what you would like to do next and uh, let's see if I can show you how the bobbin looks. So the colors are looking a little desaturated uh, right now uh, but they are a little more saturated than what you're seeing on the camera. But you have seen some pictures of this on my Instagram. So you can check it out there. So anyway, if you have, if you have been, if you land up watching this live feed later on, and you have some input on my sweater spin of different colorways, combo spinning, not combo drafting, combo spinning, then uh, let me know if it feels like a complete absurd idea or it actually feels like it. That would be a neat sweater. Um, so, well, glad, Elena, I'm glad you hung around for all this time. I was wondering if you were there or <laughs> you flew away, but, uh, glad you're still here and, uh, hopefully I will 
planned up uh, starting on that sweater spin project and share what my process is and what's happening there eventually but currently it's all in my head and I need some brainstorming maybe with somebody if somebody would just like to chat with me and stuff I'm open all right take care everyone you hop in and out okay that's good whatever works take care have a good weekend it's nice and sunny out today bye everyone uh am i your tomato do i sell the yarn i spin yes i do uh if you see my website mentioned uh on the screen creativewithclay.com uh, a lot of my art yarns out there is uh, listed for sale. Uh, some of it is sold out or whatever, but uh, what I have available is listed out there. So mostly it's all the art yarns which you're seeing in the slideshow. Those are the ones that are available for sale. So you can go to my website, creativewithclay.com and uh, for others who would like to just support me you can do so on the patreon website as well the link is down below patreon.com creative clay thank you everyone and yes there are mugs as well <laughs> yes there uh, there was somebody from twitch asking uh, whether i sell my yarn so that's why i said i need to mention that if people are interested so but uh, definitely pottery that's the reason why it's creative with clay the pottery is really my main business the yarn and the fiber is all what inspires me to do things in clay so they both are kind of related but at the same time I do land up making a lot of yarn as well so I have listed some of those um, for sale on the website so you can go have a look anyway thank you everyone I'm going to sign off now and uh, hope you all have a good weekend. Bye.